Hello! Some time ago, I tried flying this big old 450 frame with uh, an F4 board that I put Ardu Pilot on. And it's actually quite a, a while ago, longer than I thought, I thought this is a few months ago. It was actually back in June 2019. It takes me a while sometimes to come back to things. And my big failure there seemed to be that I'd installed a regular GPS, I didn't have a compass. So what I've done here is this is the BN880 combo GPS and compass, which I've plugged in to the board now. I've also, thanks to having a quick chat with Painless, put on a radio uh, telemetry system so I can do two-way uh, telemetry back to my computer. That means I can change settings or see what it's doing uh, without being wired to it, which I thought was quite good. So what I want to try and do is go back and see if I can fly this using Ardu Pilot on the setup. The actual plan is to try Ardu Pilot out because I never really tried it and well depending how it goes or it doesn't really matter I then want to move on and do the same setup using iNav because iNav I figured I'd be more familiar with and that might be an interesting test because it's got the right stuff all applied to it even if the frame is big and old and very heavy. Um, I thought yeah that's worth a go. Anyway so let's get on with it and uh, see what happens. So just to explain how I wired everything up, this is the telemetry radio. It's just a regular UART at the back there. And the GPS has a couple of extra things to connect because of the compass as well. And this goes in here. This isn't exactly uh, free. You can't just put it where you like. Ardu Pilot has a very specific place that where it wants everything on an F4. And the, the diagram looks like this, so you can't get it wrong. Even with the extra telemetry radio there, there's still quite a lot of space I've got left here if I want to go upwards and put anything else in. And I've put the compass on a stalk just to keep it away from all the carbon and out of electronics to try and keep that signal clean. So the only extra thing I had to do was compass calibration, which was basically me swizzling the quad round several times. It took me a few goes to get it right, but it was all right. And the software I'm using is called APM Planner for Mac. I'm using this because it's cross-platform. It did forget a couple of things, though, since I was last there. Specifically, what I noticed is the RSSI had gone missing, and this just seemed to have lost the fact that RSSI was on, and it was on a certain channel. So I just needed to put that back. But that, the rest of it seemed OK. OK, so we're linked up on the little radio thing. We've got a fix. Um, seems to be arming. So I'm going to actually try and fly it. I'm currently in stabilized mode. If I do the. That goes to position hold. So let's try stabilized mode. Pre arm need 3D fix. We've got a 3D fix. As far as I know. And this was the story for the best part of 40 minutes. Basically, me staring at the screen, trying to figure out why it wouldn't do stuff when it seemed to have all the relevant data. It seemed to have sats, it seemed to have a 3D lock. I could not get it into GPS hold. So what I did is work on at least getting the stabilization sorted out. So here's the first flight I took with it. Bit shaky. It's like the, the P gain's a little high or something. You know, beta flight terms. It was actually pretty good having the computer linked up remotely so I could do stuff. Of course, this is similar to doing things through beta flight OSD or on the radio. And when I talked to Painless360 about this, he actually suggested a thing called the Yapu script, which is kind of the equivalent to having that computer display on your radio, which sounds like good fun. I didn't have time to set that up, but it certainly sounds like something that would be useful. So after a few attempts, I decided I was happy with where I got stabilized mode to. It felt pretty solid, uh, nice and quick to respond. And we kind of decided that maybe my garden area is bad for GPS. Now I should take this out to field and I should see if I can get that GPS hold working and that would probably be better. Although I had more satellites than normal, it certainly seemed to be acting a bit odd. So off to the field we went. And it got weird at the field and my filming of it was pretty bad. I sat on the floor for like 10 minutes and we got zero satellites. This is a field where I normally always get satellites, but I decided to do the same that I do with uh, a GPS on, on beta flight. If I can't get satellites sat on the floor, I go off for a little fly around and see what happens. And this did actually seem to work. 
So after a few minutes, it suddenly picked up four satellites and then basically started going up from there. I should explain that we're running the Runcam Micro Sparrow, which I reviewed ages ago and I said, this is really susceptible to vibration. And uh, I was right about that. So the actual quads fly fairly smoothly, but that camera is not having fun. So that needs a, a swap out. But this wasn't really all about how it flew in FPV. So some minutes later, it gets up to six. And then when it hits seven, we get this message saying something's using GPS, which must be a good thing at the very least. Although at this point, we're somewhere away from my home position. So I, I went home to land. And by the time I got down, I had 10 satellites, although it seemed to be going down. Now I was on the floor again. Well, I think we finally have success with Ardu Pilot on the F4. We've got a position hold. Finally, after coming to the field, I'm managing to get it to uh, go. It's not, it's not loaded the tiles very well yet, but yes, it's doing position holds. So we can check out, make sure RT, um, yeah, RTL works and stuff like that. Just gonna plop it out there a bit, see what happens. So it's over there. We're going to RTL now. RTL activated. It's going up. I've never done this on RD Pilot, I've no idea what it does. It's flying away from me. That's not a good thing. Let's bring it back. Oh, I think it got the position hold that where I eventually got the satellites and didn't update it. Let's sort that out. And with the benefit of being able to look back at the DVR footage, it's pretty obvious it was flying to that home position that it got whilst we were flying because you can see the home arrow pointing that direction. But not a problem, I thought I'll bring it down and uh, we'll reboot it so it gets this position and all will be good. Okay, rebooted the machine. This is trying to load tiles based on it connecting to my phone. And we've got a GPS speed error, always good. Hopefully that will go away. And we're going to try the RTH again, uh, see what happens. I haven't got my head mount, so we're working on stuff. Now, I didn't film very well here because essentially I was having a sort of low speed, full on mental breakdown. Basically, I was plagued with error after error about GPS speed and then GPS position. And then it's not able to get a 3D fix, even so it had a 3D fix. I was just getting really confused and frustrated with it. So we're still getting the issue that seems to plague me with this thing. You see the GPS positions moving everywhere. This is supposed to be loading tiles. But if we try an arm. Oh, now it's saying, do you want to set a home position? Has that actually worked finally? Yes. It says it's executed 3D fix. Can I arm it now? No. We still got a GPS speed error because my GPS error is moving all around still. And we just seem to be getting more and more tiles that we're trying to load, but failing to load here, which is fun. <sighs> so an update, it's on again. Nine sats, which is pretty low. The Hadoop is 1.3, so under 2. The tile's loaded, it's got our home position correctly. Uh, we've got a 3D fix, but we're still getting the speed error. Ugh, it's just a nightmare. So, altitude hold works fine. Where is it? It's just sort of hovering there, doing quite nicely. There's no real wind today, so it kind of looks like it's got position hold when it hasn't, but the hassle of trying to make this thing go into position hold. If I take it out of alt hold, going up, I say, oh, hang on. Go to position hold, it says flight mode change failed. Not quite sure what it did then, it decided it was gonna land. And so it landed and did stuff. Maybe because I went in position hold and it said, oh, this is not good, I'm gonna land now. Okay, so what's happening is the computer says the GPS is glitching. It's in alt hold at the moment. If I take that out of alt hold, and then I try and put it into position hold. Position hold is... It's starting to go, look at it. Ah, it's toilet bowling. 
That's what's happening. Mode. We've got it. We got it. It's a toilet bowl job. So just to clarify for people that haven't heard the term before, toilet bowling is usually a compass problem where there's some interference. So instead of holding steady, the quad sort of goes round in a circle like it's basically stuck in the rim of a toilet. So I thought I had an issue there, but weirdly, after that point, I took off and position hold seemed absolutely steady. So I tried RTLing again. Okay, update is position hold seems to be all right. We've got it just out there. So what happens if we try an RTH? RTL activated. Goes up. See which way it goes, basically. Well, it's coming the right way this time. I got my, I got my hand on the uh, button just in case. A little bit out. Landing mats there, it's going over there, so let's take it out of the GPS. Alright, let's do another RTH test. We're looking there, let's flick the switch. RTL this one. Activated. RTL's activated. There, it's going up. What was that? It's kind of right above me. We're gonna let this one land anyway. It's about to do. Ah, it's gonna land on the grass, but let's see how close it is. Oh, get out of town! That's not bad. It got there. <laughs> and it's disarmed. Well, I was just about to give up. It, it's kind of working. I don't know if it's worth the hassle. I don't know what all that variance was and the GPS glitches and stuff, but it's kind of gone out and landed and stuff. I was hoping to do some, uh, like, you know, waypoints and stuff, maybe another time. But for now, it's, it's kind of working at least. Hooray. <laughs> it feels like an empty victory. Well, quite honestly, getting Ardu Pilot actually flying on this thing was no fun at all. And for all you guys thinking, what's he moaning about? It was only 10 minutes. The total time spent flying just those two batteries was about an hour and a half, of which 99% of the time I was staring at a screen, wondering why I was getting all these problems. Seemingly, why would this thing just refuse to arm all the time? I didn't get it. I mean, there's a few things I liked. I quite liked having this data radio and seeing what was going on with the computer. It um, saved me get my goggles on and off all the time. Uh, but that's about it. Um, as far as I know, the little uh, BT-880, or BN-880, is, is a pretty good compass GPS. Lots of people use it for INAV. Um, obviously the camera's a bit crap, but I can change it out. Everything else was kind of working okay. And when it worked, it seemed to work very well. It would hold the position nicely. Alt hold was working and return to home, when I had the home point set, seemed, seemed pretty good and it managed to just about land on the mat. So that's brilliant. What I can't do though, is have something that's inconsistent. Sometimes it would say, hey, I've got a GPS corruption and just land, brackets, crash. Um, other times it would it did the toilet bowl thing, sometimes it would fly away. There was lots of things I didn't actually film where I was, it seemed to say it would go into position hold, but just sort of wander off. Uh, and then I, I was clear something was wrong and then it's just started working. So I can't trust something that sort of works some of the time, but not other time. Uh, that's why I didn't want to go back out on this configuration and say, hey, let's try waypoints now. Now we've got it working because we haven't really got it working. We've got it maybe working. Maybe it's running Ardu Pilot for Multicopter on an F4, maybe it's a setup, I don't know. And that's one of the reasons I thought, you know what, I'll use the same config, although I'll change the camera, to go to iNav. Um, not that I've used iNav on a, a multi-rotor before, but at least I'm more familiar with how it works. And I'm not gonna get lost in a big spreadsheet of information that is Ardu Pilot. So I'll be trying that next, um, flashing the F4 board again and seeing what I can get from it. And I've never set that up before in multi-rotor, so that'd be quite interesting to do. Yeah, and trying to do the same sort of things really to see if, if I get the same sort of problems. Obviously I've got a problem somewhere in the config. If I don't, then Ardu Pilot doesn't like something of this setup. Well, there you go. I hope that's been useful to you. It was interesting for me or kind of annoying at the same 
point, but it was interesting to work through some of the problems at least to figure them out, even though I couldn't figure out the others. But uh, there you go, and uh, we'll be back, as I said, with that one, trying iNav. Until then, I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.